Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We've got lots of people uh, joining us today uh, from various different parts of the world. Uh, technology sometimes can be a little bit tricky, so I'll just leave a few seconds for people to, to join us before I introduce a wonderful panel and the webinar that we are um, running today. So, welcome to the latest uh, Nursing Now Challenge uh, webinar uh, entitled Nursing and um, Midwifery in Crisis, uh, done in partnership with Japaigo and uh, Giant Mental Health. Um, my name is Joao Marcel Grillo. I am a mental health nurse and uh, the founding director of Giant Mental Health. And I'm, I'm really, really excited to, uh, to be part of this um, first launch webinar, the series of different webinars where we'll be exploring uh, this very broad, but very important topic of um, nursing and uh, midwifery in crisis. And I'm joined by a, a really fantastic panel, fantastic group of both nurses and midwifery from very different parts of the world. And um, I'm joined by Michelle Acorn, uh, Chief uh, Nursing from the ICN, I'm joined uh, by uh, Pandora Hartman, uh, Chief Nursing and Midwifery from Japaigo, all the way from the US. Um, also joined by, hopefully a little bit later, by Bijali uh, Sina uh, from Japaigo, India. Uh, we've got Arcel Putri uh, from uh, Indonesia, uh, Rita Aki, uh, a nurse from uh, Lebanon. Hopefully also joining us later, actually, I think just joins us now. Um, um, Heba Al Musa from all the way from Syria. Um, and, and we're going to be talking about again this very broad topic of uh, um, nursing and midwifery in crisis. Like I said, this is the introductory, the, the launch webinar for a series of different webinars that we're going to do on, on this on this um, on this area. And and you know, like I start, said at the beginning, we've got lots of people joining us from all over the world. Do feel free to send us your questions through the Q&A box. You'll see that there's a chat box and you can throw us your questions. There will be um, an, a moment kind of later on in the webinar where we all get together for a discussion and we'll be able to go through hopefully some of the questions that you sent us. But throughout this webinar, if you think you've got stories that you would like to share with us, Maybe not this on, on this particular webinar, but on future webinars that we'll be doing throughout the year over the next few months on nursing and midwifery crisis. Do send us your stories. Do uh, get in touch. Send us your emails, because um, we'll be really, we'll be very, very keen to to hear from you all. Um, why nursing and and midwifery in crisis? I mean, in a time where the world is evaluating all sorts of of emergencies. Uh, from you know, climate crisis to gender inequality to health inequality to water scarcity, uh, uh, we need to step up uh, to support nurses and uh, midwives, particularly those who are working uh, in, in, in areas where there's conflict, in areas where there are natural disasters, in areas where health inequalities are quite marked, and we hoped that this webinar is that first step maybe to, uh, to discuss these topics, to, to find answers, to see whether there are ways that we can support our colleagues working in these, in these areas of, of, of conflict and crisis. Uh, so we're really hopeful that this is, this is a, a, our first step that will generate a conversation and ideas that then can be put into practice. So without further ado, um, I'll invite Michelle uh, to take over uh, and and start the, the the debate. Michelle, over to you. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and happy Wednesday. I'm just thrilled to connect with you uh, all today, and and thank you so much for this opportunity and privilege to start the conversation, collaboration as well. 
Uh, greetings, by the way, from our International Council of Nurses, our board, our 138 countries and um, national nursing associations and almost 28 million nurses. Next slide, thank you. So I'd like to set the stage for the next uh, conversation and engagement with the panel. And if the pictures don't depict, let me give you a little bit of a high level background. From clockwise, from uh, top left, you'll see how nurses have responded to disasters in recent times. Look at, it, unfortunately, the explosion in Beirut, the hurricanes in the Palmas, flooding in Indonesia, the Australian wildfires, and terrorism response in Sri Lanka. The illustrations of devastation physically, psychologically, environmentally, and the uh, mass trauma, I think, uh, illustrates just on this one slide alone. However, we know there's countless other emergency situations that nurses have responded to and continue to respond to globally as well. I also reflect not just as a chief nurse in an executive practice, but I'm a nurse practitioner as well. And um, I have actually lived through where I delivered direct care, not just leadership uh, care, where we evacuated a hospital, an entire hospital. And I've lived uh, through uh, flooding situations as well, let alone, uh, uh, obviously, the prolonged uh, challenge with uh, the sustained COVID response as well. Next slide. Thank you so much. I'd like to now show the illustration, are you able to advance this slide? Thank you so much, of how nurses are responding in terms of service delivery, advocacy and influence and care across the systems. You'll see snapshots here of our Afghanistan nurses and the health system limbo. Look at in Haiti, how nurses are responding in field hospitals after the earthquake as well as in Myanmar, where nurses are protesting over military coup. Next slide, please. I think it's important to highlight the um, prevalence, the incidence, and the actual global impact. As you can see, natural disasters kill on average 60,000 people annually. And you, you'll see the graph that shows actually, we have noticed a significant decline over the past century from millions of deaths per year to 60,000 over the past decade. More importantly, however, are the social determinants of health. We know that disasters affect those in poverty most heavily, especially high death tolls tend to be center in low to middle income countries without the infrastructure to protect and respond to events. I think it's important to also realize that delivering care in crisis situations, settings or environments present unique challenges to nurses. High pressure, stress, fast paced environments, high mortality rates, risk to physical safety, heavy caseloads, limited resources, redeployment to new roles in areas as well. Let's now add on and layer the mental health and psychological well being considerations as it's identified as a major health care issue evidenced by growing incidence of stress, burnout, depression, drug and alcohol dependence, and suicide across all groups of health professionals and countries as well. We know emerging literature from around the world has demonstrated that staff may not prioritize their psychological interventions in the peak phase of crisis and may even be reluctant to engage in services offered to them as well. We can move to the next slide. I would like to highlight for you next version two of ICN's core competencies in disaster nursing. You'll see here that there are eight uh, specific domains that are highlighted here for you. And there's four levels. Level one is for registered nurses, level two for nurses who aspire to be a designated uh, disaster responder. And we're just undertaking level three right now and hopefully we'll have it for you in the spring. Um, to help um, deployable uh, teams in emergencies as well. It's important to match your competency with your confidence. And some will be foundational uh, core competencies and then continuing along with advanced competencies, depending on what that looks like. 
The eight domains specifically highlight preparation and planning uh, to be able to increase our readiness and confidence specifically in actions to be taken during an event, communicating in terms of uh, work or emergency assignments and documenting decisions made, incident management systems by countries or organizations or institutions for actions to be effective, safety and security as well to assure that nurses and others do not burden the response by unsafe practices with their colleagues and patients. Domain five highlights assessment gathering um, to base subsequent nursing actions as well. Domain six is intervention in response to assessment. Seven is recovery and the steps taken to facilitate resumption of um, functioning or moving to a higher level of functioning after a crisis. And lastly, the legal and ethical frameworks for disaster and nursing. Next slide, please. This video will highlight actually Dr. Myrna Dumu. Uh, and if you play it, I think it speaks to itself, please. Thank you. Dear colleagues, good morning. I'm Mirna Dumit, the president of the Order of Nurses in Lebanon. I would like to thank you for listening to this call. On August 4, at 6.07 p.m., Lebanon, and more specifically, its capital, Beirut, lived a massive explosion, whereby four hospitals were completely demolished. Six nurses were killed on the spot while on duty. More than 200 nurses of our colleagues were wounded. Many of them lost their homes and lost their cars. Therefore, we are calling on your generosity to seek your help to support the Lebanese nurses. Thank you. Thank you. Next slide. I think that just does a nice little um, highlight of uh, where we need to go. And we're just thrilled because I see in it ICN actually nominated Myrna for the 2021 uh, Women in Global Health Award. And this is actually the heroine of Health Award. And this is beyond applause and the usual heroine accolades to actually show leadership and action for her support um, in the country, as well as the response to the terrible explosion coupled with, of course, the response to COVID as well. I'd like to now take you on a last journey to set the stage for um, my uh, fellow esteemed colleagues with the next slide, please. This will actually illustrate testimonials from nurses and will set the stage for future conversations. Thanks for this opportunity. بأربعة أب كان نهار مفروض يكون طبيعي جاي فيه على الشغل كانت مفروض تكون نايت شيفت كنت بعدني واصلة يعني على الشغل كنت بعد حتى ما لحقت ألبس السكروبس تبع ال تبع الجوتي وسمعنا أول صوت وصار اللي صار طلع انفجار ما حدا عارف شو صار كل شيء بيتكسر حوالي بيطلع ريحه كثير بشعه غبره وين ما كان انا هون كنت بعد ما نعرف شو صاير ابدا بعدني تحت عم جرب شد تطلع بس حس انه في كثير وزن فوقي صرنا نعيط لبعض لنجمع حالنا بنقطه واحدة بالنيرس سكشن قبل ما نطلع على الفلور لبرا صرنا نمشي فوق الارتام لنوصل لبعضنا يعني نجرب نفتح البواب كل البواب ضاغطة ما في ولا باب فتح معنا لا تكي حسيت انا انه لازم اغمض عيني لان قلت خلص يمكن انا متت او بدي موت بعد شوي لان انا ماني عارفه الفيزيكال دامج اللي انا فيه بعدين فكرت قلت انه لا انه انا يمكن مضرره هالقد انا بشتغل مع الاولاد قد ايه هالاولاد يمكن يكونوا مضررين شو فينا نعمل فتحت عيوني قلت انا يمكن اقدر احرك ايدي او اجري وهيك صار جربت دفشت حالي وقمت دغري جمعنا بعضنا اطلقوا بروتوكول الكارثه او ديزاستر بروتوكول مثل ما سميناه نحن باوتيل ديو واجت كل الطواقم الطمريديه من بيوتا كرمال تلبي النداء المساعده وقت حلت الكارثه ما ركزت على حالي اول شيء شو صاير فيي انا دغري انه بدي اقوم لاشوف شو بدي اعمل بالاولاد وكانت رفيقتي ذا بيور حده شي واز برجننت اول شيء دغري خفت عليها فكرت انه وي لوست ذا بيبي اكثر ستريسفل 
الوقت بحياتي المومنت بحياتي انه انا ماي بيبي ما عم بيتحرك ببطني وفي بيبي تاني بين ايدي اون اوكسجين ولازم تحت ماي ريسبونسبيلتي لازم اتاكد انه شي هاز تو بي فاين صرت صرخ واقفه بنص الاورجونس حاسه انه كل العالم عم تصرخ حوالي انه من مدممين وانا واقفه وعم جعر جينيكو انه مين جينيكو في حدا جينيكو لا بالاخير لقيت رفيقي كمان ريزيدنت هو جينيكو جبته لعندها وجربنا نامن مكانه ايكو تنشوف اذا البيبي استل الايف ولا لا بصراحه الدنيا كلها مكسره يعني ما عندي اكسس لافوت على حيا الله سالد تريتمون كل الدنيا مكسره ما قدرت امشي ما معي ماتيريال سكر فيها حتى نزيف ونحن بلشنا نشيل البيبيز شوي شوي ونظهرهم صرت ناولهم اياهم لبرا ندفنت في ولد ورا الثاني كان معي كان معنا اهل كمان ساعدونا هن كل ما احط ايدي على محل عم ينزل دم عم عم بيعلم دم ايفري وير بهذا الوقت ركضنا كنا هون كانت الاي سي ان كلياتها كان فيها اطفال بالكوفيزات كمان ركضنا لحتى نشوفهم كان الحيط كله قالب وزحهم من محلهم دغري فكينا لهم الاي فيات وسحبناهم لبرا ما كان في لا صليب احمر ولا شيء فصرنا نعمل شين بين المرض الممرضات الكوفيزات كلها كانت مكسره يعني ولا كوفيز قدرنا ما تكون مكسره هون الاولاد كانوا قاعدين بقلب الكوفيزات بس ما بهم شيء كل ما كنت عم بجي شيل الحديد من فوق الكوفيز كنت عم بطلع بالاولاد شوف انا اذا إذا بدي أشوف لون أحمر ولا لا بس ما كان بدي أشوف دم بس لك اللي قدرنا يعني قدرت سحبهم مش إياه ما قدر أفتح الكوفز قدرت سحبهم من الشبابيك يعني طبعا وين نحن بنشتغل من خلالها سحبتهم وحملتهم ثلاثتهم وحسيت إنه ما بدي ولا واحد منهم يزمت مني أو أو يقشط أو شيء لأنه ثلاثتهم كانوا إنه كتار شوي علي نحن بوقتها أكيد ما كنا عارفين إنه في أربعة من المستشفيات البيروت الكبيرة تهدمت ووقفت عن العمل أنا أول شيء فكرته أنه أنا عندي بس بالطابق أنه ولو ما حدا طلع على عندي أنه يساعدني أنه حدا يجي ما أنا عارفة أنه هيدا الشيء صاير بكل بنص بيروت يعني ضارب بيروت ودواحية بأقل من نص ساعة الطوارئ تحولت لكيبوس مش شايفين بحياتنا نحن هيك منظر اهلي صار بدي اقول لي على التليفون اتركي كل شيء وفلي طول ما بدي اتركوا المرضى شو بعمل انا فيهم يعني بترك المرضى بفلم انا قاعده هون لحتى ساعد المرضى نازله على الدرج كانت ابشع اكسبيرينس كله حوالي كان مدمر كله دم كل شيء بتشوفي حدا على الارض بيبي يعني مال بدي سارع فيها اسرع شيء ممكن احسن ما يصير لها شيء معي على الطريق ومال ثاني شو بعمل باللي على الارض <تصفيق> ومش عارفه انا شو بني اصلا فما بعرف كيف وصلت على الارجنس الارجنس كانت كلها منكوبه ما في ارجنس يعني كلها مكسره بارتنج الارجنس صار ارجنس ثاني لنا على المرضى على الشارجويات على الطرقات بالسيارات عم نطببهم الاكثر مريض قدرنا نساعده يعني قد ما فينا نلبي نشك مص نسحب دم نوقف نزيف عم بتذكر المصابين المدممين اللي اضطرينا نحطهم على الكونتورات ال كونتورات المكتب لنا نحن المكتب التمريضي لانه ما بقى عندنا شريوات، اضطرينا نحطهم على الارض، اضطرينا نعمل مساج كاردياك ونعمل الريانيميشن على الارض لانه ما بقى عندنا ما بقى عندنا شريوات. سو صرت نازله فيهم وحسيت واحد من الاولاد بده يسحط مني، رحت مسكته وعليته وقد ما فيني شديت عليهم بس انا ماني عارفه شو هن، هن هن بعدهم منيح مانهم عم يبكوا كانوا، حاملتهم مانهم عم يبكوا. صرت على طول اعمل هيك تشوف اذا بعد معي ثلاث روس. حملتهم وظهرت فيهم نزلت لحديت السكيورتي لتحت وصلت لقيت كمان عالم عم تجي من برات المستشفى لعنا ونيرسز عم تستقبل كمان عم بتجرب تساعد عم تعمل كومبريشن لجروحها كل الموظفين كل النيرسز كانوا بالارض عم بيشتغلوا بس كانوا عم بيشتغلوا من قلبهم كانه كانه نحن صرنا سنين معودين على هيك شيء بس هو نوت ما حدا كان محضر لهيك انتظار ليلتها بس نحن كان واجبنا نعمل المستحيل وبالفعل عملنا المستحيل بلشنا عن جد اوضه باوضه ما بعرف الا من وين اعطينا القوه نحمل احمل ازاز احمل شباك احمل باب جربت تحط المريضه على على قفا السقف نلف المريضه بشرشف لنحملها بس لانه ات واز فيري شارب ما قدرنا رجعنا لقينا كرسي شوي مكسوره حطينا المريضه عليها لفيناها بالشرشف ربطناها بشريط كهرباء كان قاطع على الارض وحملنا المريضه تسعه طوابق نرتاح انجا 
10 سكند بس لحتى نقدر ناخد نفس لحتى قدرنا نزلناها على 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 ما في محل تنزليها على هي نزلناها على الباركينج everywhere كان في حدا مدمم وعم يشتغل ويكفي عادة بين سي بي ار اي فيز كله وهن يكونوا منصبين نوقف حاملين حدا تليفون حدا عم يشتغل عن جد كنا تيم رائع انا وزميلي ما بصدق انه شخصين بيقدروا يعملوا هيدا اللي عملناه نحن لوحدنا خلصنا 13 مريض نزلناهم لتحت ونزلنا لتحت وبعدنا عم نكمل نشتغل اجى بدي فيل على البيت ما اقدر ما اقدر اترك هون امشي اجى قال له لا يمكن يجى بعد حدا انا بدي ضلني هون يعني مثل فيل وقلبي هون العالم صارت تجي لعندي انا حملت ثلاث اولاد كيف فينا نساعدك قال لهم بليز بدي شي دفيهم ليش رح اطيبهم يعطوني اياهم كل ولد لفوا بتياب حدا صرت ماشي فيهم على الطريق جربت اطلع بالسيارات وردي عجقة صار كتير كبيرة ما قدرت صرت امشي امشي اطلع بالسيارة نمشي خمس متورة ارجع انزل وقرر انه انا ما فيني ضيع وقت تو بي سيف اني كار حملنا التلات اولاد وماني قادرة اساعدهم وما عندي كتير وقت بدي وصلهم على كوفيرت بدي وصلهم محل يكون دافي ورجعنا وبس وصلونا على المستشفى كان في مسار بالارجنس وحملي انا التلات اولاد كنت عم بقول لها انه بليز بدي كوفيرت وحدة ما بدي تلات كوفيرت بس كوفيرت وحدة وانا بشتغل فيهم ما بدي حدا يساعدني اوكي انا تعبانه وكنت فيزيكلي خلص يعني ما بقى فيني قد ما ماشيه وتعبانه ويمكن عندي انجري وما معي خبره سو so, قعدت قدامهم حطينا لهم الاكل وكل شيء الاهل ما كانوا يعني ما كانوا مصدقين فاتوا لعنا ما كانوا مصدقين هول الاولاد يعني دستسون هيك طلعوا فيهم يدستسون تشوفوا اذا مزبوط اللي بدي احملهم بس بدي احطهم على قلبي تاكد انه هن منيح بس حملوهم وهيك انا كثير ارتحت لانه عرفت انه انا يمكن بماي بيرسونال افورد وذ ذا هيلب اوف ماني بيبل من المستشفى فور شور sure. ومن اللي كانوا على الطريق ومن كل العالم قدرت اوصل واعمل شيء يمكن ابت بوزيتيف بكل شيء اللي مش منيح اللي صار. نحن وي توك انوث اول ما بلشنا بس ما تخيلنا انه نوصل لهيدي المرحله يعني وميبي زبطت معنا هالمضبوط وصلنا له وبرهنا انه فينا نكون قد تحسي انه هون انا ما محل شغله، انا هون عائلتي، انا هون من وقت ما تخرجت انا بلشت هون. ما انا قادره كنت فل بطل عقلك عم يفكر هون قلبك هو هو اللي عم يمشيك لا تحس بتعب لا تحس بتزمر لا تحس انه خلص انت بدك ترجع على بيتك لانه بيتك تدمر نحن كمردين طول عمرنا كنا نكون الفيرست لاينرز والانفجار اللي صار اكد انه نحن دائما الفيرست لاينرز بكل شيء بالديسيجن ميكينج بالترياج بروسس بنقله المريض انت اقرب واحد بتكوني للمريض بتعطيه الايموشنال سبورت لانه ات از فيري امبورتنت بتعطيه الفيزيكال سبورت هيدا هيدا المريض بدي انقله ما بتفكري انه راحت المستشفى ما بتفكري ما بتفكري بشيء بتفكري انه انا اي هاف ذس جوب اي ماست كومبليت ذس جوب وكل شيء باقي بعدين بيرجع هيدا الليله رغم كل شيء بيرجع صار فيها خلتنا نحن نكون فخورين بحالنا نحن ممرضين والممرضات لانه قادرين نعمل فرق بحياه العالم وبتمنى انه تنذكر ما بقى تنعاد Thank you all. I, I can't thank you enough for your valued service, dedication, and humanity. And if that's not a powerful testimonial and moving to portray how nursing and teams respond through trauma, triumph, resilience, and leadership, I don't know what else does. And let's optimize the future together so we are best prepared to respond and recover to help our world. Thank you. Michelle, um, thank you very much. Thank you um, for, for sharing with us, as you said, this incredible video. I had watched just the beginning of it and so many questions, but then I was, I must say, I was completely speechless. I felt quite emotional as well. Um, and something that you mentioned earlier that will be really interesting maybe to talk about later when we have the panel discussion, which is the, um, the care competencies in, in, uh, in uh, disaster nursing um, and, and the eight domains, what's there, what's already there available for, for, for nurses who would like, for example, to work in this sort of areas and midwives. But what an incredible testimonial. And um, it will be interesting to maybe uh, hear the views as well of other people who are part of this panel and who might want to share some stories with, with us all. 
Uh, so thank you so much. Um, Pandora, um, I think you are going to tell us a little bit more about this topic and maybe break down the various different components of what crisis, because we're talking about crisis, but crisis come in all sorts of shapes and forms, most of the time quite unexpectedly, isn't it? Um, so over to you, Pandora. Thanks so much, Jal, and also Michelle for beginning to set the stage on what the role of nursing and midwifery in crisis looks like. First slide, please. This is something near and dear to our heart at Japigo, where we currently have a presence in over 40 countries, many of which are experiencing different forms of crisis, disaster, and conflict. Burkina, DRC, Ethiopia, Myanmar, Nigeria, South Sudan. Next slide, please. And when we see, you know, we're, well, what is this stuff we're talking about with a disaster or crisis? Well, the standard definition is that this is an occurrence that is going to disrupt your normal conditions and existence, causing a level of suffering that is beyond the capacity. And I think what we just saw really sort of brought that home to us. We know that when we're looking at this, we have human induced disasters such as human error, which the explosion in Lebanon is a little bit attributed to some incorrect storage in ammonia or damage to the environment or people, or even the arsons, you know, that can result in these global wildfires or natural disasters, which we see here. This is some of the volcanoes that were erupting and you can see the volcanic ash that was quite unexpected in the Caribbean, which is also due to the variant changes in global weather pattern. And we know with this expansion of crisis and disaster, that as nurses and midwives, we're gonna have an expanded role to care for the sick and injured and it's going to cause all of us to begin to think more deeply about things like infection control, contingency planning so that we're stopping the damage. What does it mean to triage and mass immunize and evacuate and community and property? A lot more of the public health. And the reality is that we don't always come equipped with the special, the special skills to adapt to those needs. Next slide, please. We see here how it's flooding. We see flooding here. And again, the, the, the clouds for the natural storms, this has increased dramatically over time. So our entire health systems are being transformed. And as nurses and midwives, we are often that frontline first and the long-term responders to the traumatic uh, events, which global unrest, pandemic, and thinking about this uh, undue burden psychologically, that is then given to the nurse and midwife who were used to working under critical and harsh conditions. So we would think this is a natural space, but this is even harder. And I think this speaks to the resilience and the deeper grit, I think that it takes as we continue to delve into this chaos. Next slide. So we do know that cultivating that grit is gonna be an essential component to this unrest and emergency preparedness. We see here actually one of the others that is really huge now, conflict. And when we're thinking about conflict, it's shocking to know that most conflict now is protracted greater than nine years. And we see on the right side here, one of the refugee processes that was undergoing in Syria. And even once people are getting out, we're looking at 20 years more or less in the refugee status hugely. And I think what is also significant is when we look at these global unrest, pandemic, biological, terrorism, chemical, that women and children are 14 times more likely to pass on during one of these disasters. And that when we look at our, our mortality rates and excess mortality, uh, we see that most of that is actually occurring in places where there still is disaster or, or the fragility that it comes along with it. Next slide, please. This is bringing a home a little bit more. This is from our colleagues at the UNHCR. The estimates is that there's gonna be 235 million people affected by crisis and disaster this year. Huge, huge phenomenal numbers that no one could ever have anticipated. So I'm gonna draw all of your memories back to just this year alone. Let's think about what's happened. And we're more aware of this because of the rapidity of the media cycles. Let's think about the Amazon wildfires disaster. Let's think about the Arctic heat waves. 
you know, the thoughts that by 2035, there's not going to be any, well, what's going to happen to us? We talked about the, the explosion. What about the Vietnam flooding? And one flood alone wouldn't have been as much of a challenge, but there were nine in a period of two months. Let's look at the crisis that is trending with the cyclones that are coming. We look at what's happened in the Chandra bands between Bangladesh and India. We look at desert locust and the outbreak, the disaster that swept across causing the famine. Whoa, it's a lot. And that's just looking at the past 12 months. So imagine moving forward, we, we, are, we are going to be, next slide. Which brings us to a core value system that we do have as nurses and midwives, because we do have the ability to naturally perform during a crisis or an emergency because of the critical thinking and the judgment that is a part of our core pre-service and even in-service training to monitor to de for deviations to correct. But look at this, as we call you back to the core principles of when we're approaching crisis and disaster, of treating our patients with humility, impartiality, independence, neutrality, these core principles that many of us learned about in ethics, reinforcing as well that our primary objective as nurses and midwives in any of these crises is to reduce the avoidable loss of life and the ongoing burden of disease and disability. Next slide, thank you. I love this because this is a graphic. You can find this um, on the FP High Pact and Practices when we look at the humanitarian settings. It's looking at the phases from the early phases of prevention and identification systems to rapid response. And we can think about this cycle, thinking about something as simple or complex uh, as the hurricane systems were, they had disrupted supply chains with Hurricane Harvey and the pediatric nurses who were the largest combined force took specific actions, right, during emergency management activities to prolong actually the IV supplies, which nobody was thinking about. So even beyond the crisis and into the active response, they were able to cope with the ongoing demands of the population, not just the emergent. We think have to think about the focus on preparedness, mitigation, response, recovery, evaluation. And we, as the disasters and crisis continues, we need to think about how we're gonna keep that at the forefront of all of our education. Next slide. Because there are commonalities, no matter what type of crisis there are, these are some of the commonalities that we're then gonna see. And with the advent of globalization, with our mobilities, which we've seen, the acceleration of the pace of crisis, some would say, in our interconnected world as a living, evolving system. And looking at the new risks that emerge because of the interconnections, and there's a lot of thoughts about one crisis feeding another, feeding another. But these are the commonalities that you will find in every crisis. Next slide. We're here, I'm just showing you some additional great resources. It is beyond the scope of what we're doing today to give you everything, but we wanted to whet your appetite and begin you thinking about this in a more concrete and comprehensive way here. And we see some great resources that go back and draw attention to this. And you see again, the women, um, on the covers of these. These are updated routinely, and I encourage you to go and look at them, particularly with the issues of safeguarding our health care workers in these particular crises. Next slide, thank you. So where do we go from here? Well, we see that our major organizations that are supporting us with the uh, International Council of Nurses and the Interpen Federation of Midwives think that this is important enough, that we've got the competence and we've also got position statements that are looking at specific role in disaster and crisis preparedness. We want to begin thinking about the baseline for the health providers, us as nurses and midwives, what are we going to do? How, what are the opportunities that we're going to then seek to actively cultivate to Mock drills, is it? Is it further educational opportunities? Is it the advocacy with our administrators and our educational institutions that we've got to encourage this as a core root of our education? What are the modules? There are many wonderful ones out there as well that even if you chose to 
expand your own education disaster ready Kaya that you can do some free online Coursera's because we must go there the impetuous is now next. Because we are a part of the humanity and regardless of the setting. We have a pivotal role and need to expand our knowledge, skills, and responsibilities beyond just the empathy and learning as well how to do with our psychological to respond because we are the essence of healthcare. Remembering that we are the largest sector and that we're recognized and have community strengths and community resources that are going to be critical to safeguarding our world. Next slide, thank you. A reminder, I think, for us all that we are there, that every day hundreds of millions of people are going to face these threats because of our crisis, our national systems, our local systems, our commitments as nurses and midwives must be to prepare by strengthening our overall capacities, that we have to think about how we're going to mitigate these ongoing crises by taking measures to reduce the effect of disasters and crises that health systems, we can think of what was happening with COP26 last week and the call for global climate awareness. We can think of our efficient and timely address to pushing our public health systems to take this, what COVID has shown us to go beyond, to address public health priorities so that we don't go backwards, so that we recover and get our local health systems back to functioning throughout the crisis system. We know that lives can and will be saved when we as nurses and midwives optimize our population health. When we are ready, willing, and able to respond to all of these devastating events, both now and in the future, in a connected way across the globe. Thank you. Dora, thank you very much. You've made so many important points. I was just trying to list them all here. You talked about the different types of crisis, uh, which again, you know, started by saying that the crisis is such a general term. So you made it kind of so much more tangible. Um, and unfortunately, there are lots of different crises in the world. You talk about the commonalities between those crises, also about the skills that we are already have that I think are intrinsic to nursing and midwifery and the resources that are there, but there's still so much to do, isn't it? There's, that we, we need to build something that is comprehensive, like you said, that offers uh, um, us some answers to questions. Is it more about more education, new modules, um, et cetera, et cetera. But then there's a message of hope there and humanity, and that's, that's incredible. The thing that I was um, uh, thinking about is, what is the impact that this has on, on nurses and midwives? I and mean, whether there's something there that we also need to, to, to explore. How do we support uh, nurses and midwives that go through these crises and who um, need to be sheltered as well and, 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 and be offered some sort of yeah, support because the trauma can be quite, quite big. And I suppose this is something that we can maybe explore in, in, our, in our discussion. And this brings us, so thank you very much, uh, Pandora. This brings us to uh, the next group of, of panelists who I think are going to tell us more uh, uh, personal stories, stories that they've lived uh, through their work, uh, through their experiences of um, living in crisis. Um, I'll start with, uh, with Bijali, who I can see here on the, on the right-hand corner, Bijali, all the way from, from India, um, welcome. Really excited to hear about what you want to share with us today about your work in India. Over to you, Bijani. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leo. Uh, so, am I audible? Because, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, so I just wanted to share um, a few Indian contexts which we are facing into uh, the crisis time. So I'll, I'll just focus on the Indian context which we are facing day to day, as well as in terms of educational preparedness, how prepared we are for kind of crisis situation. Uh, as we have seen the, the, the starting video was the touchy one because everyone empathize how nurses are empathetic and they usually work with the patients of uh, saving lives, uh, no matter what services she is getting or what facilities she is getting. Uh, 
So considering that we um, in India, if you will see, there are multiple issues which are related to either man-made or a natural, um, natural issues. You can see in um, globally it is highlighted that we are facing issues of uh, bad air quality in our capital city of Delhi, which is everywhere. Like the news is flashing everywhere. There are multiple uh, issues which are affecting due to the climate change. You know. Similarly, um, we have multiple issues of natural disaster like uh, <clears throat> flood and all. Again, if we talk about Delhi's condition, um, the Delhi, again, they have declared for lockdown because of the poor air quality and, and it usually has a health impact. And considering that the government, the policymakers are taking some decision on how to save or how to avoid those and even uh, using a mask. So these are the uh, issues which we are facing day to day into the climate change uh, due to the climate changes. So similarly, we um, when we talk about natural, obviously there are multiple man-made uh, uh, events which are happening in India. We have terrorism issues, we have attacks everywhere. So there are a few examples where I just wanted to quote on where multiple people have uh, died due to an attack in a uh, terrorist attack. Again, you can see the Chennai due to the unconditional um, un, uh, seasonal rains and all it is already been, uh, uh, the alert has been issued and uh, the high, highly dense populated areas have been under the water. So there are multiple issues which uh, we are facing currently. So what I feel for considering that because being a nurse midwife, what we are seeing into our day-to-day um, uh, -day life is we have multiple uh, sources of crisis which is already designated everyone is aware of it but somehow our education our systems are not prepared in that way I, I would like to give an example in a student's life we have a chapter of disaster management but we are not uh, well prepared or we are not given a skill of in a situation of, of such a uh, emergency uh, or crisis situation, how we should respond? What will be the person's uh, responsibility? What role I'll be playing? So those kind of uh, preparedness is still uh, absent in our so. So I just wanted to highlight those. Well, uh, we have a limited uh, curriculum coverage into our nursing education. We, in a, when we are into the service, we don't, don't have a regular drill because it is a conditional base. If the hospital is facing some issue, or the uh, governance or the policy makers are making some thing, then we feel, okay, we should conduct a drill, but it's not into um, institutionalized into our system. Again, uh, in terms of our own preparedness for a hospital or for an organization, still it is missing. There are leadership crisis. I, I just wanted to highlight, still we don't have the, whatever listed core competencies are there. And in terms of that, in our nursing fraternity, we don't have those core competences. Again, we need a, a continuous system of um, uh, continuous our professional development for the disaster nursing. So, which I strongly feel we should have it in service role designation because often it uh, plays an important role when uh, we are thrown into a crisis situation. So what I'll be doing, what uh, areas I'll be taking care of, what exactly um, I'll be evaluating, whether I'll be able to handle the situation, even um, in, in terms of infrastructure. So if in terms of man-made or some kind of emergency situation, our infrastructure are not prepared that way so that we have those emergency set up or any alternate setup to uh, uh, to cater those uh, services but still it doesn't matter where we are whether we are educated or not but the nurse uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a pollution whether it's smoke in the delhi or flood in chennai but still the humanitarian role of nurse always be a prime and they play an important role to save life and they work hard to ensure the health services should reach to each and every mother. So that's what I wanted to share from India's aspect. Thank you so much.
Charlie, thank you. Thank you very much for that account of, of what takes place in India. India being one of the most populated countries in the world, you know, massive territory, so many different, uh, 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 so many people in such a, a wide territory. And you gave so many examples of the types of crisis that India has been exposed to over the past a uh, few years and few decades, both in terms of natural dis uh, disasters, but also in terms of war and conflict, if we want to include terrorism under that kind of umbrella umbrella term. And, and South Asia, which is one of the areas that um, the organization I work with uh, works, so in South Asia, we work mostly in the Himalayas, is actually one of the areas that is thought to be mostly affected by climate change. So, so many different challenges. And again, as I said, when Pandora uh, um, uh, intervened and, and uh, gave us uh, that uh, brief overview of, of crisis, my, 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 um, my thoughts are as well, what kind of support is there for you? You talked about how heroic and how resilient the nursing and midwifery uh, workforce um, is, and that's extraordinary, uh, but what kind of support is there is there for you guys? Uh, and, and I suppose, again, that this is something that I look forward for us all to, to discuss um, uh, later in this, in this conversation. So thank you very much, Bijali. Um, let's continue in, in Asia. Let's just go a little bit further south. And, and I'll ask Arcel, Arcel uh, Putri, to, to join us now um, and to tell us, Arcel, what, what's happening in Indonesia? Over to you. Right. Thank you very much. So let me try to share my screen first. Um, could you see all right my screen? Yes, we can. Right, perfect, thank you. So um, thank you, thank you very much for this very valuable opportunity. I, I'm very overwhelmed with all of the sharing. So uh, I'd like to share about um, Indonesian nurses experience. So for this opportunity, I would like to highlight um, our experience, uh, particularly in natural disasters. So um, to just give a little bit context about Indonesia. So um, in International Forum, Indonesia always called the hypermarket of natural disasters because our geographical um, locations, which is lies in a ring of fire, which make us vulnerable for natural disasters. So. For the past 10 months, from 1st January to 12th November 2021, we have over 2,000 natural disasters strike in Indonesia. So that's just a, a context. Um, among them, uh, perhaps 30 cases of earthquake. It, it is reported by Indonesia's National Board for Disaster Management. So, 30 cases of earthquakes, more than 600 landslides, and then more than 300 um, tornado. So it leaves like about 7 million people in Indonesia living in shelter. So that's, I think that's quite um, relevant with what Pandora, Pandora uh, presentations about the refugee and everything. So this is just uh, an example of how we are survived from those kind of natural disasters. For instance, if we remember the great tsunami and earthquake of Aceh with 9.1 uh, Richter scale, it took us for about 10 years for fully recovery from this kind of disaster. So what we uh, Indonesians nurses do in response to disaster, it really depends on the type of disaster, I would say. So for instance, um, this is just an example of how every day we deal with um, trauma patients, trauma survivors like splinting and perhaps wound care. It really depends if the, the wound is coming from the earthquake. So it fractures, it's kind of infections, but it will be different if it's coming from uh, volcanic eruptions. It will be mostly burn wound, wound care. So it's just like every day. Um, 
man bleeding management and let's say perhaps fluid resuscitation so it's like every day for responding like to this kind of situation but we also deal with i think this is inevitable this is what we do in 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 the field so um this is banana tree so we are run off a splinting tools because of how massive uh, the the survivors are and then we are not prepared for the fractures we are more prepared to the burn wound so we are out of splinting so we cut the banana trees and use the banana trees for the splinting so this is our nurses so we also did collecting stabilization tools and many other things because of the limitations of facilitations. And then this is our team. So this is our team. While we are responding, this is the second day of the great uh, flooding and then tsunami and everything. So we provide clean water. So we use stone. So this is our team responding to this. We use stone, coconut, and then we provide clean water. This is what nurses do also in Indonesia. So beside the splinting, the wound care and everything, we did this too. So I would like to highlight a disaster management cycle. So we have like a mitigation preparedness response and recovery. And uh, what uh, me and my colleague in Indonesia through my organization, Indonesians and uh, Disaster Nurses Associations, collaborating with other sector, we try to focus on Sendai framework, which is highlighted to disaster risk reduction um, activities. So this is a Sendai framework for disaster risk uh, reductions uh, framework. The seven target of Sendai framework, actually, if we could uh, achieve seven target of disaster uh, risk reduction Sendai framework, it could push forward sustainable development of uh, SDG goals. It is uh, suggested by the UNDRR, United Nations for Disaster Risk Reductions. So um, the new ICN versions of uh, nursing competency is actually um, I'm really, really glad that uh, ICN published the second version. So because we have already curriculum for our disaster nurses, the, the first uh, version of disaster nursing competency, which is on 2009, I think. And then the new one already tailored uh, disaster nurses competencies and then um, divided it into skill for mitigation, preparedness, response and recovery. So it's, it's really, really great. So in terms of disaster risk reductions, uh, our work also focus on uh, psychosocial impact. So there are a lot of discussions that shift how we can support our nurses from post-traumatic stress dis disorder into post-traumatic growth, which is uh, the concept, the definitions of the concept is like experience, a uh, positive change or growth process as a result of traumatic experience. There are a lot of um, research around that, but limited uh, around disaster that could have um, post-traumatic growth could build resilience for uh, nurses better. So can it be taught? So I'm, I'm going to leave my presentations there. So perhaps I, I really love to have a fruitful uh, discussions afterwards. So thank you. Marcel, thank you so much. Uh, it was great to hear about um, what takes place in Indonesia. And you've mentioned so many quite um, shocking figures. I mean, I was aware that Indonesia is, like you said, in the ring of fire and that there's a lot of uh, natural catastrophes taking place uh, on a yearly basis, but you mentioned something like 2,000 natural disasters over the past 12 months, which is absolutely incredible. And that made me think Pandora was talking about um, uh, the issue of you know, further education and developing specific modules 
uh, around um, disaster and crisis uh, management. And I was wondering whether it would make sense that uh, you know some modules are developed for specific world regions because we have a particular type of crisis taking place in a particular country. Just a thought, and again, something to, for us maybe to talk about if we have time uh, later on. So uh, incredible resilience again, like in India, when, when Bijali talked about what happens in India, the same scene is seen in Indonesia, and what Michelle and, and Pandora talked about, it's just a common threat, isn't it? How resilient, uh, human, dedicated nurses and, and midwives are, which is really, you know, absolutely amazing. It just makes me feel so proud of, of, of being a nurse and being here in this platform with, with you all. So let's now uh, move a little bit further northwest to uh, the Middle East. And I'm really excited to see that Eba, Eba Al Musa, that you are here with us. We can see you um, in, our, in our video. We were not sure whether we were going to be able to to, to, to see you, uh, uh, but you're here. So can, can you hear us okay, Eba? Yeah, hello, nice to meet you. Hello, Eba, hello. You are in Syria, Eba, and we, we, we're really looking yeah. forward to, to hear now your story uh, and, and to hear about what it feels like, how it feels like to be a nurse at the moment in a country like Syria. So over to you, Eba. Uh, yeah, I have uh, registered a video because my network here isn't that much good. Sure. Hello. Assalamu yeah. I'm from Syria. I wish peace to everyone everywhere around the world. So I'm here today to talk about profession that I do every day in my life, which is midwifery. I would like to talk about midwifery in Syria, what we live every day and which challenges we face. I studied nursing before, and frankly, my knowledge about midwifery was very little. But with the, the start of this situation, of this war, I began to see women, mothers, and what they so fear in this dangerous situation. But I was helpless to help them, to understand their problems, to be able to solve their matters. That's why that time I decided to specialize in midwifery. So that I can be more closer to those young girls, to those women, to those mothers, and so that I can help them and be with them to continue. But really, when I decided to specialize in midwifery, it never comes to my mind that midwifery, which has existed to help women, which has existed to help, to support those women, those young girls and those mothers to continue. It's never comes to my mind that it's itself have a lot of problems and so many challenges, facing so many challenges every day. In my country, we need an integrated, an integrated health system so that everyone can take his rights, so that we, as midwives, can have independence and openings to be a real support for every woman. We are in the absence of an official, a created institution for midwives inside. With the absence of an organizational st 
structure to standard the information to standard information and keep it update we are in absence of support of midwives and their information we are unable to see the updates and even if we know those updates you will see later that we are unable to uh, work with the new updates in our hospital and I will tell you later uh, why that's happened with us so two days before I was trying to find words um, for this uh, for this uh, presentation but unfortunately the sounds of lying has been distracting distracting me making me so nervous so that I forget everything that I wanted to do making me so nervous and and make me give up for everything i wanted to say that because i'm living here and everyone here facing this this is case for everyone and we as a midwives facing from this too much because we are working somewhere somewhere which is dangerous and we are leaving our family our kids our ch children in another world maybe so much far and it's in dangerous too and while working we should we shouldn't think that much about them we have to keep to keep focus about our works you know we shouldn't make any mistake Okay, it's difficult sometimes to talk about. We have a lot of memories about this. But so, it's very difficult to work while you, are, you aren't feeling safe. At least we want to feel safe about our children children's if not about ourselves so this is a challenge too we are facing it always uh, always okay let's continue some times ago i attended some courses about parental depression and when I apply the program to myself, I was surprised. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you the reason. To myself, I was surprised by the result and called the trainer and told her that my degree was so high which would need a doctor to help me in this more than the woman which i met for this program and that in that call the trainer laughed laughed and said that hiba we are making this program to help pregnant to help women uh, around delivery and after delivery no it's not making to help us you know what i was thinking that time i was thinking that i'm also a woman and how can i help women other women to find i don't know how can i how can i help them in a matter that I have it by myself, 
how can I give something to other people which I don't have it? Eva, can you hear me? Yeah. We saw, I think, just over half of the video. Uh, we wanted to stop there, yeah? Yeah. Okay. First, I have to say sorry about my weak English. Very <laughs> good. Don't, 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 please don't, because this was an incredibly uh, video. Uh, I have to clear touch. one thing that uh, Dr. Bandura asked me to make a, a video for five minutes and I began to speak and speak and it took about 15 minutes. I said, oh, sorry, I, we, I, we, are, uh, we, 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 we do have, uh, you know, we do have time constraints. However, um, we could hear you forever. Uh, and it was, it, again, incredibly moving and i thank you for being so brave to share uh, about yourself and your fears and your anxieties but also your your hopes and your your wishes of helping other women and i have to say it's really good to hear from the midwife as well um it, and it's incredibly i'm incredibly uh, honored and privileged to feel privileged to have somebody like you uh, with us here here today and my hope is that um, something can come out of these webinars to help and support um, nurses and midwives like yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I hope the connection stays strong so that you um, can can join yeah, us sure, yeah. later on in, in, the, in the webinar. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for, for, for this, this Eva. Thank you. So last but not least, we're not moving very far from Syria. We're going to Lebanon and uh, hear from uh, Rita. Rita, we had the pleasure of meeting on previous webinars. Uh, so I'm really excited to see you again today. Um, Michelle has uh, shown us that video and Michelle has also, uh, and rightly so, very kindly um, checked with you and asked you whether you were comfortable with that video being played. Uh, and talking about any kind of experience that you might want to share with us. Uh, so thank you very much as well for being uh, with us here today. And over to you now, Rita. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Rita Ie, a registered nurse from Lebanon. I'm very proud to share with you our Lebanese success stories, despite everyday challenge that we are facing in Lebanon. Next. Like John Paul II, uh, our Saint Pope said before, Lebanon is more than a country. It is also a message to all the world. But unfortunately, next, those old golden days are gone nowadays. We are in a big disaster. Since 2019, nurses and midwives in Lebanon are in the eye of the storm. First, the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we had the 4th of August Beirut blast. We all have uh, seen the video of ICN and the order of nurses. And now we are facing a huge economic crisis. So uh, nurses are anxious. Uh, they are leaving the country by thousands. They are searching for better opportunities, but the most important, they are searching for safety and security. Next. So Lebanon is in a uh, terminal brain drain. We have a shortage in nurses, and this shortage is focused on experimented nurses and young nurses. So when you meet every day a young nurse, an early career nurse, she tell me, well, in two years, I will leave the country. I don't want to stay in Lebanon. I want to go to a place where there is no uh, disasters every day. We are in uh, economic crisis. We have no resources. 
the all the healthcare system is running out of resources. So are you asking me to stay in Lebanon? What, why should I stay in Lebanon? What are you offering to me? As nursing director, every week I have one of my colleagues entering my office and putting his resignation letter. And they are telling me, well, we are going outside of Lebanon, no matter where. What is important is security. What is important is safety. Next. What's the impact on nurses? Economic crisis, pay cuts, work overload. There is no more balance between family life, social life, and work life. And we are in fear of wars to come. Every day, our politician says, well, today is better than tomorrow. We don't know what we are facing tomorrow. Next. But not everything is dark. We still, we still have hope. So since there is in Lebanon a situation of economic crisis and uh, the population is getting poor and poorer, what is now raising is the, the home care demand. And this home care demand is based on nurses. So now the public is more confident in nurses the image of nurses is getting better because they need the nurse now to go home to do the physical exam, to give medication, to continue with the patient, and the nurse is less paid than the doctors and the hospital. And here comes our big role to improve our public image. Next. So what nurses are doing is to go from passive resilience to active resilience and transformational action in Lebanon. What we have done in our hospital in order to raise nurses and midwives voices was a restructure of all the uh, form of the hospital. We have worked on the work schedule of nurses there is shortage in fuel, so we are doing carpooling for nurses who are living to neighbors. They come together at work and they go together. Like this, they can improve uh, the use of uh, fuel and resources. Also, since nurses are going home to uh, care about patients, we have launched a uh, sessions, a multiple sessions on a clinical uh, judgment to enhance the capacity of nurses and to build their competency and their performance. And uh, with Nightingale uh, Nursing Now Challenge, one webinar, I uh, was listening to Professor Maureen, and uh, there was a question very attractive, is to ask what matters to you. And when I was doing my round, my leadership round as nursing director in uh, my hospital, I have noticed that when I asked nurse this question, I was receiving a lot of answering and this, those answering collected together uh, drive us to another project that we have launched. Next, please. That is the joy at work. Nurses and midwives need to work on their well-being as well as they work on the community wellness because the us is very important. I cannot be uh, with my patient if I am not satisfied, if I am not good, if my mental health is not good, how can I care about my patient and his family? So here comes the humanity and the empathy that can go to the heart of everyone and can improve his well-being. And this initiative enables nurses to more be engaged in the decision-making on their daily work. And it's not for one shot. It is a day-to-day -day work with employees, with nurses. It involves all the employees in the hospital, not only the nurses and the midwives. So everybody is hand-in-hand uh, in, hand in this initiative. And this project uh, has created a camaraderie between the nurses and other employees in the hospital. And now they are working better together. Also, uh, we have to know that joy is not the absence uh, of the burnout. It's, it is a set of the mental. It is very important to mention that it is built in the mental of the person. We need coach to help us to organize social activities, 
And the most important that this project is built with a budget of zero dollar. The hospital gave us the approve, but they told us we are in economic crisis, so the, the budget is zero. And here comes what the nurses and midwives uh, have planned. First, in 4th of December, they have planned for Barbara Fiesta. It is a saint that we uh, celebrate in Lebanon. Uh, the uh, people wear uh, casual and they change their faces. So it is a kind of uh, a social work. Then they are planning for an open doors for the hospital. And this open door targets the children of the uh, employees, nurses, and midwives. So it is a day activity. The uh, kids can come to the hospital, and the nurses are the animators in this uh, day. They are preparing a set of activities. And between those activities, there is a description about the work of the mother and the father. When they leave their house, they go to the hospital, what they are doing. So when we are offering to our kids what we are doing in the hospital, they will see a video, they will go in a round in the hospital, they will be more standing with their parents, they will appreciate the work of their parents. And like this, the nurses are getting more hope for them, for their children, and also for the community. And when they are satisfied in their work, they are satisfied in their home, so their mental health is getting better. And all these works, all those projects are led 100% by nurses. So here we are raising the voice of the nurses. We are giving hope to each other and to others in our community. And thank you. Rita, thank you very much uh, for not just telling us what has happened in, 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 in Lebanon, but above all to, I mean, it's just a wonderful to uh, um, end this initial panel discussion with an example of um, what can be done to support the, 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 the mental well-being of nurses and midwives and other health professionals. And, and really interesting that this is in this case, and probably that applies to other cases as well, it was not about injecting money into it, wasn't it? It was just being uh, you know, resourceful and imaginative, which I think is another characteristic which defines nurses and, and midwives, how imaginative, how creative uh, nurses and midwives can be uh, in the face of adversity. Um, so it's, it's, it's an, an extraordinary uh, example of resilience, but also of hope. Uh, and I wish you all uh, success for this, for this project, which I know uh, continues to run in, and, and, and I hope that's going to run for a long time. Um, thank you very much to all of you. And um, we are a little bit short of time, but if everyone has time to, to continue uh, uh, joining us on this webinar, it would be great to um, have kind of a panel general discussion uh, on, on everything that we've been talking about. And, and this is huge, isn't it? Just saying, let's talk about everything. There's so many different things. Uh, so many questions, at least that I have uh, um, uh, around, uh, well, to all of you. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to dissect some of these questions, some of these things um, as we go through uh, um, the future webinars connected to this topic of, of nursing and midwifery in, in crisis. Um, maybe because this is the launch webinar, um, we, and if you agree, we could focus on two things. On one hand, um, what is the impact? And I know that we had some examples of it, very vivid examples, but what is the impact that these crises are having on the mental well-being, the physical and the mental well-being of nurses and midwives working uh, in crises? And I think it's not, you know, we had a lot of examples of um, actual crisis, emergency relief situations, but there's an aftermath as well that can go on for years. So what kind of uh, uh, support, what kind of impact is this having on the nursing and midwifery workforce? And maybe the other theme, the other question, the other topic, whatever we want to call it is, um, are there any support systems in place? And if not, 
is this something that we can collectively start thinking about? Um, very general questions. Michelle, maybe I'll start with you uh, as you're representing the ICN. Um, any, any idea, do we have any, any statistics even on the kind of impact that these crises and the, the pressure that nurses and midwifers are um, on when dealing with crisis? Are there any statistics on, on the well-being and on, on the impact that this has on, on the well-being of the workforce? Uh, great question, and, and thank you all to uh, uh, my team panelists today. It's uh, very engaging. When we talk about impact, I guess we need to talk about data, dialogue, and decisions, and reliability of, of uh, data, because sometimes we actually measure different things, and that collection is, is important. So I, I do want to think about that as well. There, there are pockets uh, uh, related to, of course, COVID, uh, disasters as well. So sometimes they do tend to put it in a, a big pool and that might be dilutional and maybe sometimes in terms of knowledge translation and generalizability across the world versus pockets of country and region, I think we need to be mindful of that. When we think about impact too and a measure, is it quantitative or, or qualitative? The stories today, I think are very powerful and impactful. And if you're trying to drive a decision and influence or impact, it's the stories, not necessarily the numbers as we've known. We know the significance, morbidity, mortality, uh, physical and psychological, but I think we need to think about that. And the lessons that I thought um, I took home as chief nurse and as ICN is the impact. I wrote some quick notes when everybody was talking organizational impacts across, you know, local, regional, national, and the globe, then we need to think about operational impacts and how we actually manage uh, across systems individually and collectively as well. There was a clear impact and an intent to lead and an intent to nurse. And sometimes it's a reaffirmation. We talk about resilience. Resilience is not just individual resilience of the nurse. It's the system, it's the world, and it's humanity. And we need to make sure people understand and appreciate what resilience means and not make and, and the um, global impact of what resilience is as well. The core impact to make a strategic action plan that everybody can work on together, as I see, is health workforce, uh, mid uh, migration, uh, recruitment, retention, onboarding, offboarding, helping with these mental health supports for sustainability and have access to the resources, and more importantly, have a general commonality that we can pivot and flex to help one another wherever that need may be. And then, of course, having a um, you know, um, a workforce that's able to um, uh, specialize in some areas as well. But we do need core competencies, and that's across ed education, curriculum, in practice, any setting as well, from academia to direct care and the leadership. I'll stop there. Mm -hmm. And just another question, Michelle, you mentioned about the competencies, and you talked about it in your, in your presentation. Um, are they ready available? Um, how, how easy or uh, challenging might it be for organizations, for individual nurses and midwives to access those competencies and then use them to build their own curriculums at kind of an ed education level or as an employer? Uh, yes, thanks for the question. They are really readily available and I put them in the chat um, as well. So there is the version one and two, and I did mention uh, level three is coming out as well. The original um, uh, version one talked about um, disaster competencies for mitigation and prevention, preparedness, response and recovery. And then I mentioned for the second one for the different domains and others will come. There were, are some early discussions about learning modules and courses, but I think we need to really look at the repository. Like Pandora uh, uh, being a chief or Japago highlighted we have a lot of resources. Let's share these resources, not duplicate it, and maybe build a community of practice, not just for implementing, but for evaluating and more importantly, mentoring one another um, uh, as we marry our, our professional and emotional intelligence as we're trying to deal with um, uh, this moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Um, uh, but Pandora, anything you want to add to this that that um, um, Michelle was talking saying in terms of, of the resources that are out there? Let's not duplicate. Let's just make sure that we can kind of spread what we have there and make it accessible to everyone. Anything you want to add? Sure. Thank you for that opportunity. The resources do exist, but looking at the mental health impact, just acknowledge there's going to be a mental health impact. Whatever disaster, whatever level you're of the crisis you're in, you know, even when you're doing the monitoring and evaluation, there was a point where I hated looking at my phone every morning. I had to steal myself because I never knew what would be on it in terms of having, you know, the direct contact as active things were going on or seeing things in advance of what the news was saying on as alleged stuff. So I'm all about functional pieces to help nurses and midwives cope. Looking at quick rapid access things like the psychological first aid packet that is available in multiple languages out of our partners with the WHO. Um, there's another really practical thing that I love, you know, that looks at the issues of using some of cognitive behavioral therapy that anybody can do anytime, anywhere, using some of those sorts of rapid things to help us cope and to get through his resources. So understanding we need the modules and the curriculum, but that stuff is also takes some time to develop. So pulling more easy, rapid fix, rapid fill, anybody can use them, you know, trauma tapping, you know, looking at really amazing things like the benches to talk to one another, to cross share, WhatsApp support groups, just really functional stuff as we're working and continuing to navigate through this new space together as a global connected community. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pandora. So there's so many opportunities. There's so much out there that can be done, isn't it? And there's almost like different stages of, of what to do and how to intervene. And I and, and one question that I had related to this to, to anyone in the panel, really, but maybe thinking more of Rita or Ibo or Arcel or Bijali, that you have been or you are very much in situations, ongoing situations of crisis, when resources are limited, when there is no internet connection, when you cannot use WhatsApp, when everything around you is destroyed. What, what would be helpful? If you could, if you had a magic wand, you said, you know, let's, let's, I, I need to do something, to, you know, with myself, with my colleagues, what would that be? Could there be anything that um, could be given to you, could be done to support you in those extreme situations? Rita. Yes, well, we have uh, lived this situation on the night of 4th of August when uh, we had the Beirut blast. Uh, I want to highlight the work of the nurses. Everyone, uh, every nurse, we, we didn't have WhatsApp uh, since uh, all the internet connection in the country was off. Even the landline was off, so we weren't able to ask nurses to come to the hospital. But what was amazing that nurses alone came to the hospital. So here the magic word is the initiative of the nurse and the building of the leadership of nurses. Since nurses uh, uh, have this ownership and this leadership and they have the heart to work. So there is no material, there is feelings, there is uh, this work that is built ongoing. And this is built, uh, I believe, uh, uh, via formation uh, and uh, learning. It's not something that comes from a day to another. In my hospital that day, uh, we have uh, about 500 uh, person burned that uh, came to our hospital. Our nurses were not asked to come. We, we haven't uh, the uh, communication channels. They came alone. I, when I arrived to the emergency, I live one hour ahead of the hospital. When I arrived at the emergency, I saw all our nurses in the emergency and they were uh, doing the disaster plan without even that I was there. So it was amazing. And this is based on two things, the preparedness. Yes, we weren't prepared for this disaster, but you know, as we have accreditation and all this, we have our plan of disaster. This is a continuing education and also the uh, power of the heart of the nurses. So I think this is the magic. Absolutely. And I think you mentioned something so important, which is leadership. 
uh, and nursing leadership, which is a topic that has been discussed on, on previous webinars, uh, and, and which is fundamental, isn't it? Not just to you know, guide other nurses, but also to know how uh, we can tap into our own resources to identify the strengths that we have in us, the strengths that organizations have and how we can respond to these very challenging, very challenging situations. And, and, and so, so thank you, Rita. That's, that's really important points, uh, really important points to, to make. Um, Eva, anything you would like to share with us, anything you would like to tell us um, around topic of what is important to you as somebody who is living in, in a part of the world that is on an ongoing crisis and for which, if, if I'm not mistaken, there is still no end in sight. And that it's very difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. First, I'm really happy to be here and I have to say thank you again. Um, frankly, when I heard uh, from the others the stories, um, at least it comes to my mind that uh, we all are facing challenges and uh, it's not only here in my country. Uh, that's why it's wrong to think to give up from the beginning. Um, I hope that uh, at least we can be together and uh, I can hear from the others. I can know what they made. I can think about myself, about uh, the condition here. Uh, it's really a very big uh, chance uh, for uh, thinking again and again that um, we shouldn't give up and together we can. Uh, stand up again. We are facing a lot of challenges here. Uh, sure, we can't <laughs> count it now, but I'm sure we can solve it by that time. Thank you, Eva. Thank you very much. And it's really um, wonderful to hear that this, this, that you taking part in this conversation, you were thanking for being part of it. Um, we thank you to, to join us. Um, it's 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 good to hear that this is is helpful. And again, as we said at the beginning, this is the first of various different webinars. And our hope is that something of, of, of these webinars, new ways of of, of supporting um, nurses and midwives across the world in the crisis. So this is the beginning. It's it, and again, very general yeah. conversation, but hopefully the beginning yeah, of the conversation. Exactly that will lead us to something more tangible uh, and, to, and, and a lot of resources are already out there. So it's not about replicating as Pandora and Michelle so rightly mentioned, uh, but thinking whether there are other things that we can do. So we really look forward to, to continuing to be in touch with, with people like, like yourself. Bijali and Arcel, um, we've just passed um, four o'clock here in the UK. So just, we're over time, but just wondering whether you, there's something that you want to share with us on, on, on this issue. Yes, um, if I could add a couple of things. Um, so this is based on my uh, own experience and recently um, me and my colleague uh, doing some research around um, healthcare professionals and their willingness to respond to work following a disaster. So, um, could you hear my voice all right? Or I'm, yes. you're losing me. No, we can hear you, we can hear you. No, we've lost you. We could hear you, but we've lost you, Asa. We've lost you. Bijali, Sorry, I'm there back are, again. <laughs> there you are. Okay, right, okay, okay. So, um, so yes, um, I really want to add something. So uh, this is based on my own experience. And recently we have this kind of qualitative uh, research around family preparedness. So willingness of healthcare professionals to respond to work following a disaster, I think it's relevant with what Heba has already told us. So 
family preparedness of healthcare professionals is really, really important for us as nurses and as midwife to be able to um, work in a peaceful mind because we, we, I think we need in, in, in terms of disaster context, we need to divide it uh, nurses or, or midwife, the one who local nurse, which mean the victims or survivors of disaster itself who are expected to respond like zero day until one day following a disaster. And then the dispatch nurses who are sent to a disaster area. So I think family preparedness of healthcare uh, professionals is really important and should be put, I would say, in the preparation programs of healthcare uh, professionals. I think that's perhaps my highlights. So yes, thank you. Sure, thank you, Arcel. Thank you very much. And I think that really links with, with what Pandora talked to us before about thinking about education modules. How can that be developed? How can that be incorporated into nursing and midwifery training in the future? Binjali, last but not least, anything that you would like to share with us on this? Yeah, I would like to thank you, Joe, and uh, the organizer for such wonderful uh, 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 panel and the um, it's on uh, such crisis situation. And uh, when I came across to the experiences of Heba, Arcel, Rita, I'm very inspired by you. I'm just, it's a awesome and it's a great thing to hear from you all personally and uh, take the inspiration. And obviously there are issues, there are challenges and uh, being into a position, I'll try my best to push this, uh, uh, this emergency and a crisis on nursing part to be a part of our curriculum as well as into our continuous nursing education as rightly Rita said, they came forward because they were uh, well prepared and they knew what can be done during the crisis situation when they had such a uh, badly condition of explosion. So thank you and I would like to uh, express my heartfelt uh, gratitude uh, toward all organizer and especially Heba being into such situation, seeing your smiling face and sharing those really inspire all of us and it, it's incredible. And thank you so much bringing everyone together. Zali, thank you very much. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. What a wonderful way of ending this webinar. I, I, I cannot stress enough that this is the first of a series of different webinars where we're going to continue exploring this topic. So hopefully things will be, next time we meet, uh, it will be more specific. I think we still have to confirm the date for the next uh, uh, webinar. It's probably going to happen in December. Um, there's going to be, and Pandora touched on this, three different areas that we're going to be exploring, uh, conflict, uh, natural disasters, and health crisis. Um, so do keep an eye on, on social media, on the Nursing Now uh, Challenge um, web page, Facebook page. Uh, the dates will be advertised. And so we, we really look forward to welcoming you, you all. Uh, I can't thank enough to every single one of you uh, for, for joining us today and for sharing your stories. Uh, not always easy to, to share. Uh, so thank you so much for, for sharing them uh, in this kind of open public forum. Um, incredibly moving, incredibly inspirational. And again, um, personally, I really hope that um, something, I mean, I'm, Pretty sure that something uh, positive, real, real positive, will, will come out of, of 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 these webinars. So I really look forward to seeing you all again. Uh, last but not least, I would also like to thank the uh, Nursing Now Challenge uh, team, um, Professor Lisa uh, Bayliss Pratt, Anna Finch, and Andrea Latham for their work, backstage work, but incredible work. They're the ones that make these. Uh, webinars possible so thank you to them as as well for all their energy their efforts uh to bring us all together so uh without further ado thank you so much and look forward to seeing you in december bye-bye thank you thank you so much Joe. bye
，拜拜。